In this video, I'll be helping you identify three migraine triggers that you didn't know could cause your next attack. The Greek physician Hippocrates first wrote about migraine attacks around 400 BC. However, it's only recently that we have started to understand what they are. Whilst research doesn't tell us exactly why they happen, they're thought to be the result of temporary changes in the chemicals, nerves and blood vessels in the brain. And you probably already know about the common triggers such as caffeine, poor sleep, change of weather and so on and so forth. So I thought in this video, I'll give you something a little different with three triggers that you didn't know about. With trigger number one being cheese and red wine. Wait, 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 don't be so hasty. That doesn't mean goodbye to wine and cheese parties, but it does mean using the power of the knowledge that I'm about to share with you. Cheese and red wine both contain a natural compound known as tyramine, which is known to be a migraine trigger that is found in protein containing foods. Tyramine falls under the umbrella of monoamines. And there's an enzyme in the body that breaks down and processes monoamines that is known as monoamine oxidase, otherwise known as MAO. If you don't have enough MAO in your body, then you could suffer from a migraine. Scientists are still trying to understand how tyramine triggers migraine, but one explanation is that it causes a chemical imbalance in the brain, which is a known association for migraines. I've listed other examples of tyramine on the screen, and wait, that does not mean missing out on the party. It just means replacing that red wine with something else, and choosing a cheese that is lower in tyramine. Take note of these items that are lower in tyramine compared to their tyramine-rich counterparts. The party, it truly goes on. And moving on to trigger number two, we've got vertical stripes. No, really, just, just hear me out. As part of a study in the current journal, researchers found that when looking at vertical lines, it can trigger something in the brain known as a neural loop. This in turn can trigger epilepsy in its worst case, or more commonly, it can trigger a migraine, which means that stripes in clothing, artwork, blinds, radiator grills, and so on and so forth could trigger an attack. Whilst the reasoning is unclear, it is believed that repetitious stripe patterns can set off gamma oscillations in the brain, which are a pattern of neural oscillations in humans that play a role in attentional selection and memory operations. The research does not conclude whether gamma oscillations are a necessary part of brain function or not, but we do know one thing for sure, choosing what clothes to wear, that's already a headache. And vertical stripes, that is a practical fashion faux pas. Anyway, enough of my bad jokes, moving on to the final trigger, which is chewing gum. Chewing gum has been a popular choice of refreshment for thousands of years, dating back to the Neolithic period. Its link to migraines came after the pediatric neurologist Nathan Wattenberg made the observation that many of his young headache patients chewed gum daily. When he suggested that the kids stop, in many cases they became substantially better. It's been reported that chewing gum stresses the temporomandibular joint, which is the TMJ for short, and that is the place where the jaw meets the skull. And interestingly, TMJ dysfunction has been shown to be a cause of headaches. So next time, if you need to freshen up your breath, reach for that spray instead or a mint instead of the chewing gum, just a thought. However, whether we're looking at common or uncommon migraine triggers, it's important that we recognize the four phases of a migraine in our prevention efforts. Prodrome, aura, attack, and postdrome. Each of these phases have their own set of symptoms and the earlier phases give you a warning sign of an uncommon attack. Prodrome symptoms are usually small changes that act as big signals to tell you that a migraine is on the way. The symptoms that you see on screen are the type of things that you should look out for, but bear in mind that not everyone experiences prodrome, or at least not in the same way, and these symptoms usually present themselves a day or two before an attack. I stress the importance of recognizing this phase. It leaves you with big clues that lead you towards understanding your triggers so you can stop an oncoming attack. The next phase of a migraine known as aura can occur either before or during the attack phase. Auras are characterized by temporary symptoms of the nervous system that are typically visual but can also be auditory or physical in nature. They usually build up over several minutes and last for up to an hour. The symptoms are on screen and this is another phase worth noting down as it signals to you that it's time to take some medication. The next phase of a migraine is the attack phase, which is where the migraine kicks in. If left untreated, it can last anywhere in between 4 to 72 hours. The final phase is postdrome, 
This is where the symptoms of feeling drained, confused or elated are common. This can last for up to a day. If you want to learn more about migraines, their triggers and their treatments, then head over to Farm Self Centered blog where you can find comprehensive articles such as our ultimate guide to migraines, which I'll link in the description down below. And whilst you're there, sign up for an account so you can gain access to exclusive promotions and earn loyalty points to save money. I want to know, how do you cure your migraines? Let me know down in the comments below. Drop in a comment when only answer my question, but it will be a place where everyone can go to and it might help out a ton of people. So let's help each other. And speaking of helping each other, check out the video on the right so you can save some money on your healthcare needs.